Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for G1 Climax 2015. We are on day 13. It feels like this is, I mean, it's funny because we just got past the halfway point. Now, yesterday was the two-thirds point. It feels like this tournament's starting to fly by. And at first, it felt like it was going super slow. But at, regardless of all that, nonetheless, we are at 16 minutes, 45 seconds. We will be hitting the play button on go. Three, two, one, go. And right now it's an eight-man tag team match. We've got Taguchi, Kamatsu, Jushin Thunder Liger, and Kojima taking on the team of, uh, looks like, Dorada. I think I saw David Finley. Who else is over there, John? Kushida. Uh, yeah, Kushida. And who else? I thought and it was Yuji Nagata. 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 Yeah, yeah, Nagata. Yeah, you know, very interesting. We know that Kojima lost yesterday to Goto. Yes. Very competitive matchup, so he's looking to get back on track. And now Mascara Dorada and Jushin Thunder Liger starting this thing off. This is a very intriguing matchup. And look at Dorada there, having Liger scouted and already with the quickness with the dropkick. Beautiful. And let's go ahead and just point it out right now that, yes, Kojima and Nagata will be facing each other tomorrow at G1. That's going to be an interesting matchup. But, uh, Finally, Kojima. somebody that Kojima can match up with conditioning-wise. I'm thinking I'm going to pick Kojima for that match. Absolutely. Now, yesterday, Ashen, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't you say that Kojima was one of the participants that you considered to be mathematically eliminated? Or does he, he still is. have a fighting He is game? mathematically okay. eliminated, yes. Yeah, I'm just glad we got to reset the field. And guys, I mean, not to have scattered vision or anything, as Jushin Thunder Liger now is going to be going for that serve board here. And oh, look at that, David Finley, though, breaking it up. David Finley, a little bit of a different hairstyle going on right now. Absolutely. I dig it, man. I dig it very much. He looks like he's trying to be Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah. Yeah, I dig that vibe. And now I believe... Kushida, Kushida and Yohei Komatsu. Oh, wow. And Komatsu taking it, too. Kushida, you can tell that win yesterday gave him some confidence. But Kushida knocking the confidence right out of him with that slap. Definitely, and, and can you imagine you speak about confidence? Yohei Komatsu's confidence would go through the roof if he could take the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion to the limit. But uh, as I was saying earlier, not to have scattered vision or anything, but guys, I mean, the G1 Climax Tournament matchup happens today. Shibata versus Tanahashi, and what a hurricane run there by Komatsu to Kushida. I mean, yeah. Ashton. Well, I mean, they had a match last year, and it was five stars, so we'll, we'll see. Absolutely. I mean, the, the stakes are so high, they couldn't be any higher. And look at Kushida there, balances himself on the apron. Great balance on Kushida. And then there's that Inziguri there, supported on the apron. Now he's going to springboard. Nice drop kick by Kushida. And now look at that. The double kicks there. I'll tell you, Kushida's so athletic, so good. And now yeah, Komatsu yeah. I mean, uh, to me, I get a little bit annoyed. I feel like a lot of the time... New Japan kind of books Kushida the same way the WWE books the Usos. Like, for some reason, he is just super capable of taking on multiple people at the same time and winning. Yeah. What I'm are you doing, Kushida? Wow, he's really gaining that momentum for that dropkick. Is he going to do it already? Uh, I kind of feel bad for Yohei Komatsu. <laughs> there we there go. There it is. My goodness. What do you even call that, Kushida? And that almost got the three count, but Yohei Komatsu stays in it. Oh, man. I, I, I don't know. Maybe he was Scoop trying to... slam. Oh, is he going to go for a senton already? He may be. They may feel confident enough in the, uh, where they've Phoenix? got you. Kamatsu. Moonsault. And Beautiful. Oh, lands away. on his feet, though. Kamatsu moved out of the way, it looked like. Kamatsu oh, off the ropes. Sense. Forearm there. Nice. Nice. Kamatsu forearm. looks like he's hurting. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, he needs to get to his allied corner here. He needs to make a tag. Oh, in comes Nagata. And in oh, comes man. Kojima. We, the, we were getting a preview here. Oh, yeah, it's Blue Justice, Yuji Nagata versus Kojima. And now those measured chest kicks there by Yuji Nagata. I'll tell you, Nagata. Is what really a, oh, but Kojima caught the boot. Oh, Reverse. wow. Kojima. Oh, we're going to get lightning chops. Oh, man, I wince every time. Look at Nagata's face. <laughs> oh, man. That's, That's the most thing. fun part about lightning chops is just seeing the guy taking it, how they react to it. Yeah, exactly. What is their face going to be? In all the faces, I'm not ashamed to say, I have had a good laugh about. Elbow uh, time. Oh, oh, no, but Nagata's oh, no. up already. Nagata. I can't believe Nagata's up already. That was awesome. Oh, maybe... Uh... I don't know, maybe a Yurinagi he might have been going for. Oh, no, I think that was going to be an exploder T-bone, but now these two exchanging forearms. Oh, wow, these two going back and forth right now. And Kojima, I think, is going to get the edge here. Yeah. Oh, he's, oh he went for the lariat, but Nagata with the knee to the gut. Nagata, a measured knee. Beautiful strike by Nagata. And now, now Nagata, Nagata rolls through. 
He went for the jump kick, but no, just a slap to the face. Wow. Oh, now no, Nagata, it looks like Nagata might have wanted a T-bone there. I'm saying, oh, right to the ribs, right to the ribs. Yep, it was just a big reminder that Nagata's got bruised ribs. Oh, man. Bruised, broken, fractured, injured. Koji oh, Cutter, wow, look at that, no problem. Wow. wow. And now signaling for that Koji Lariat. Yeah, he's ready, man. Oh, oh, but Nagata, Nagata, he's going to get it in. Shirome! Hey, armbar. Wow, and now Jushin Thunder Liger. The entire team just comes out and breaks it up. It's like, nope. <laughs> you are not getting this man to tap out right now. Absolutely. We are not losing the match this early. We know his conditioning sucks, but we're Oh, but look at David Finlay. Oh, uh, David Finlay now trying Taking to it. seize the moment. Taking it to Kojima. Didn't see that coming. Absolutely. Now he's got Kojima in the Iron fireman's carry. Could Kojima be a roll. out of it, though. Kicks to the gut. DDT. Beautiful DDT. Drove David Finley's head into the canvas. Is and Liger in the wrong corner? I don't think so. And there it comes. Oh, to I Goof. thought they switched corners. That was weird. The hip check. And another one. And another one. He, um, he really needs to get a little more creative. Absolutely. Oh, oh. inverted atomic drop. Beautiful counter by David Finley. And now look at this. Backbreaker. Ah. Nice. Look at that. Wow. And Finley there too. And Taguchi kicks out. What irony that the kid whose father is known as uh, I'm Irish and I love to fight, stealing a move from Sheamus, the Irish curse backbreaker. Absolutely. And now there's the steamroller. Oh, now look at this here. Nice uppercut there. That was beautiful. David Finley's on fire, but Jushin Liger there breaks things up. <laughs> and goes after Nagata, too. Man, these, this team is really prone to breaking things up and then taking it to the next level where they kind of multiple man team one guy. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, this is kind of like signature in all of New Japan's tag matches, it seems. Especially. Oh, what a lariat there from Jushin Thunder Liger. Oh, man, Liger may be ready to end this thing here. I'm telling you, man, they're beefing him up for Tyler Breeze. Oh, man. Oh, and now... Top right rope rear view. One, two. Oh, but again, now the other team breaks it up. That was pretty much a dog pile breakup. That's funny. Yeah. Everybody getting on everybody else, and now the ring clearing Kojima out. Kojima and Nagata are going at it, but in the meantime, Taguchi has David Finley right where he wants him. Taguchi. Oh, he's going to go for a double chicken wing. That chicken wing Oh, but David Finley rolls through! One! <laughs> two! Oh! Oh, wow. So close. So close. Nice and uppercut. there's an uppercut there. Nice uppercut there. Wow, and nice things Gary there from Taguchi. See, that's what I'm talking about, man. Taguchi could be really good if he just, you know, chooses to actually do wrestling moves. And there's that face buster there. And that's got to be it. That's He's going to roll over to the cover there. A little bit of difficulty, but he finally gets it, too. And that's it. Recount. Wow. I'll tell you what, though. Taguchi, I mean, like you said, he has that ability. He has the ankle lock. He has almost like that... that Tigers would like, like lift up into the face buster. Um, yeah, the, the double chicken wing face buster. Double chicken wing face buster. Yeah, I would even I say double chicken wing sit out face buster because. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty effective. I mean, that that's moves like that that, I mean, make Taguchi a former IWGP junior heavyweight champion. Let's not forget. But yeah, I just wish he wouldn't focus so much on the rear based offense. If he could really refine himself and get more serious. I mean, he could give Kushida a run for his money one day, I think. But I think if anybody if if anybody is in need of almost a Naito-esque repackaging, it's Taguchi. I completely agree with you, and David Finley doesn't even know where the hell he is. But I have to wonder if Taguchi would be able to pull that off. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I would like to think that he would be. Naito certainly took advantage of it, and he went all the way with it to the point where he's in your fave five, and he's done a complete 180 with me. Uh, but Taguchi, I don't know. Maybe he cares more about making the people smile and having a laugh than really getting to that next level. But he gets the win for his team here, and that's really all that matters in the immediate moment. So nicely done by Taguchi. Well, he doesn't make me smile. He makes me angry. Yeah, I, I echo your sentiments. <laughs> We're no, such grumpy old men. <laughs> I know. It's like, can't you guys learn to smile? No, no. I can only learn five moves at a time. You know what makes me smile? Naito. Yeah. Oh, my God. Naito really is something Naito out. just showing up and screwing with people's heads is what makes me smile. What's his tournament matchup again today? Uh, today, Naito will be facing, let's see here, 
Toriano. Oh my god, oh that's right. Oh my god, that's right. The, the Battle, Battle of the Mind is... Games. <laughs> oh man. Oh man, Jay White and Michael Elgin versus Carl Anderson and Cody Hall. Yeah, good luck with that, guys. Yeah, I, I think Carl Anderson and Cody Hall are winning this. Yeah, I mean, Ashton, uh, Michael Elgin and Carl Anderson, though, aren't they at the same level in the bracket, four and two each? They're both four and two, but guess what else? They're facing each other tomorrow. Yeah, that's why I'm saying, like, one of them will go to five and two, the other will go to four and three. And I'll tell you what, though, if you're Okada, you've got to be laughing at everybody else right now. You're like, you're all ants. Only one <laughs> loss so far. You know what, me. though? Okada is one loss away from joining those ants, so maybe he should practice what he preaches. And that's true. That's true. He may lose his next matchup. I mean, I don't know what his next matchup is, but if it's Okada's an opponent... Okada's next match is against Takahashi, so he's probably not going to lose that. Oh, uh, yeah. Probably not. Dude, can you imagine the upset if Takahashi beat Okada? Yeah, that's not happening. Oh, my God. Um, the yeah. only way that happens is if there are just a ton of Bullet Club shenanigans. Yeah. Even then, I could still see, just because Okada might come to the ring with a few, you know, chaos help, if you know what I'm saying. I don't think yeah. that would even affect him that much, because he's probably going to bring Ghetto to the ring, that's for sure. I could see him also bringing maybe Yoshihashi, you know, like, there are going to be a few chaos stable mates to keep the Bullet Club in check, and there's no way he's losing that match. I just think that Okada just laughs at everyone. That's kind of how I look at him right now in this tournament. Like, well, John, let me ask you this. If you were Okada, wouldn't you? Probably. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then if, you know, you were Okada, but then you saw Ishii come into your dressing room, would you continue laughing? That's the Yeah, yeah, because they're freaking <laughs> stablemates, man. They're both in chaos. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd be like, oh, yeah, and I forgot I have this as my muscle. Oh, my God, can you imagine? Okada, I mean, I never, I never really thought about it in that context. They're stablemates, so as a consequence, Ishii can be the muscle of Okada. That is terrifying to me. Uh, you, well, uh, that would be the most OP trios team of all time, would be Chaos, because it would be Okada, Ishii, and Nakamura. I'll tell you what, if they ever went to Lucha Underground and won those trios titles, they would never give them up. I want to see them in the next Lucha Libre World Cup, man. Oh, uh, dude, they, they'd take it home. They'd be my pick. They'd be my oh, emotional I mean, they, pick, and they'd be my objective pick. It really just kind of depends on who's booking it because it's probably just still going to be a triple A team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. But here comes Michael Elgin and Jay White, Carl Anderson and Cody Hall already in the ring. I'll tell you what, man. Carl Anderson, he did what we thought he was going to do. He beat Hanma. He, uh, Hanma tried to go for that top oh, rope. Oh, Hanma. Yeah. Yeah, Hanma. He'll and win there's... one eventually. And Michael Elgin, I mean, Ashton... If you're Michael Elgin, and it's been your dream to compete here, you've got to be very proud of your tournament performance, regardless of how it shakes out, because you're in the same rank as a lot of these guys that have been in Japan for a while. He's uh, tied. He's basically tied for second best right now. Yeah, absolutely. So, tied with a bunch of guys, but still tied nonetheless. I'll be honest, you know, given Michael Elgin's uh, status, you know, as kind of like a newcomer to this whole scene, despite his veteran experience in North America, I didn't know how they were going to treat him, Ash, and I'll be honest, I, don't, I didn't think it was going to be as bad as, say, Tomoaki Hanma, but I didn't think he would do as good as he's been doing, so it, it's been quite a pleasant surprise, I'll tell you. Yeah. And we'll see, you know, him and Jay White. Michael Elgin, he's got to be ready for Carl Anderson. Carl Anderson has taught us through the course of this tournament. He can get a gun stun off of you from anywhere. Yeah. And, and ladies and gentlemen, for those of you having trouble with syncing up, we are currently at 30 minutes, 8 seconds, 9 seconds, 10 seconds. So hopefully that helps. Uh, the bell rang there at, I think it was like 12 seconds or something like that. And now we've got Elgin facing off with Carl Anderson. They're starting things off. We're going to get a little preview here. Absolutely. And now the stare down between these two men. And uh, there's the lockup. And, and see, that's the thing. Elgin, okay. yeah, and there, there you see it right there. Oh, just my God. Out. He's got a massive power advantage over Carl Anderson. He does, but here's the thing, and I'm not trying to call Elgin stupid. You know, this isn't me trying to stir the pot He's or anything. He's showing his hand. He's showing his hand. Like, he has the power advantage, but you know what goes really great with power? Tact. And I feel like Carl Anderson knows how to pick his spots better than anybody in this tournament, which is weird to say, given his record. You'd think he'd be undefeated if that was the case. Wow. But, uh, wow, and Elgin just shoots Carl Anderson off, and then, oh, wow, the shoulder block making Carl Anderson wince. He has to get the blood flow back in his arm. Elgin inviting him to try again. 
He's trying. The ropes. No. And again. Oh, but Elgin off the ropes, and Elk Anderson with the, just a kick to the gut. I love it. And then he flexes. <laughs> I love Carl Anderson I love so Carl Anderson so much. Oh, wow, we both had the same thought. And now oh. there's the shoulder block there by Elgin. And now Elgin flexes. And Elgin, that's kind of his thing. But Anderson's been stealing everyone's taunts, so get used to it. I know, right? That's what Carl Anderson does. What a clothesline in the corner there by Elgin. And now... Um, Anderson's job is just to put on amazing matches and make fun of people's goofy stuff that they do. I, I love what a talented douche nozzle he is. It's pretty amazing. I know. And I'm waiting for Cody Hall to come in and kick Elgin in the gut, only for Elgin to flinch and then get Anderson back up. He didn't even uh, kick him. There it is. Just punched him a little bit. And Jay Elgin White in, though, to take yeah. Cody Hall out make sure he doesn't try again. Jay White giving Elgin that coverage. Gotta appreciate it. And, yo, and there's the suplex. And there it is, absolutely. Goes into the cover here. Hooks the leg. Two. The and two Carl count, Anderson kicks out. I'll tell you what, man. Elgin, I do believe he can beat Carl Anderson. Like I said, Elgin's been doing so much better in this tournament than I would have even given him credit for. Carl Anderson's a dangerous son of a gun, I'll tell you. As now Jay White here with the knife edge chops to Anderson in the corner. I don't know if I would have tagged out while the momentum was on my side. But Jay White now is going to have this on his shoulders. And, uh, oh, wow, beautiful. What a drop kick there by Jay White. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and right there, Carl Anderson taking it to these guys. <sighs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, and, and now he tags in Cody Hall. Cody Hall here coming in. And now he's kind of mouthing off here to Elgin. And now he's going to have his way here with Jay White. Yeah, I mean, say what you will about Cody Hall being a young boy. He definitely stands out a lot more than the other young boys. Oh, what a back elbow there by Cody Hall. Just a huge back elbow and then another one. He has definitely taken some pages out of not only his dad's playbook, but also his dad's best friend Kevin Nash's playbook. Oh, just an overhand chop. Oh, man, Co Cody Hall has got that raw power. I don't, really, I don't really remember his dad, Scott Hall, being that much of a power guy. I always thought he was more of a technician, but Cody Hall going the other side of the spectrum. Yeah, that's why I was saying. He's mostly, I mean, a lot of the stuff that he does... He does some stuff that his dad did, but he also takes a lot from Kevin Nash as well. Absolutely. You know, I guess he's been influenced by all parts of the click. And now look at that. Oh, just drive his head into the corner and now the tag to Carl Anderson. And when the Bullet Club gets in a rhythm like this, they are so dangerous. And what a knife edge job there by Anderson. And I now, think it's worth noting Carl Anderson is a tag team specialist. This is what he does. Well, such a tag team specialist, Ashton. I mean, we, we say it pretty much every G1 Climax uh, day because, you know, Carl Anderson's either going to be in a tag match or a tournament match. He is one half of the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. Oh, I wanted him to do that big boot again. That would have been great. But no, that Cody Hall so just gets good. in the ring and then punches Jay White in the stomach. You know, keeping it very conservative. Now goes in the corner there and, and Cody Hall, I'll tell you. Went what? to the opposite side. Oh, and Jay White lands face first into that turnbuckle pad. <sighs> Yeah, when good face thing Toriano isn't in this match. Otherwise, that would have hurt a lot more. Exactly. I think Cody Hall now prepping himself to charge at Jay White. Oh, he's oh he's hulking up here. He oh, but Jay White got the boot up. He did. He did. He stays alive. Goes to the top rope now. Could it be a drop rope. kick maybe? Crossbody. Oh, oh Cody oh, Hall rolls oh, through. Cody Hall. Wow. All the way slam maybe? A fireman's carry. Samoan drop maybe? I don't know. He just looks annoyed. Oh, just right the knees to the face there from Jay White got out of it. Oh, nice back elbow there from Cody Hall. Yeah, Cody Hall there. Oh, drop kick, Jay White. Jay White there, beautiful job there. And now he creates that separation. Can he get the tag? Oh, he got Cody Hall. Cody Hall just tagged Anderson. Oh, but no, Jay there White got Elgin. Elgin comes in too. Elgin, sunset flip maybe. No, just flips over. Back elbow to Anderson. Elgin nice telling Anderson to get up, and he hit him with another, another back, back elbow, elbow there. Nice Irish gonna, Rip got reversed. Anderson just, wow. Michael Elgin with great patience there. And now Ollie, that takes out Cody Hall there on the apron with that close. Oh, and a back elbow. Actually, that wasn't a back elbow. That was just an elbow right to the back of Carl oh, Anderson's head. Oh, man. Could it be the deadlift Texas here? German. Carl Anderson is not a small person. No, he is not. And the bridge as well. Yeah. But and if it's for a guess, I'd say Carl Anderson was about 6'3", 260. Absolutely. Now, what's Elgin thinking about here? Sharpshooter, maybe? Really, really poorly done sharpshooter, but yes, sharpshooter. Wow, okay, there you go. Cody Hall breaks it, well, attempts to break it up, but Elgin's just really angry right now. Yeah, Elgin's just looking at him like, what are you doing? And there's a boot to the head. and Elgin wow. just spat in his face. Wow. 
Wow. And now, oh, wait, oh. Tried to go off the ropes. Elgin caught him, though. Caught the arm. And now, look oh, at this. God, lung combination blow. sent on lung blower. That was amazing. Elgin has been so on point, and Anderson, though, stays in it. Anderson stays in it. It's so impressive. He Not only did he time that well, but he spaced it perfectly so that he could also hit Anderson with the top of his back. Oh, but the big boot there from uh, Anderson. Yeah, the pump kick. Could it be the neck break now? And it is, yes. One day early, and Anderson's already working on Elgin's neck, getting it softened up for tomorrow. He is such a technician. He is so good. And now Carl Anderson could be thinking TKO here. Yeah, he's, he's got, got him in the... But it looks like Elgin's going to get out of it with those elbows, and he does. Anderson there with the forearm, Elgin with the forearm of his own. We're going to trade some soup bones here for a little bit. But no, Anderson ends it early with a knee to the gut. Anderson off the ropes. Elgin checks the lariat, and then a big enziguri to the back of the Anderson's head. Just beautifully done, and now tags in Jay White. Jay White there, forearm, forearm, another forearm. Shoots Elgin, or no, Anderson, off the ropes. But Anderson reverses. Jay White leapfrog. Anderson off the rope. Back elbow from Jay White. Nicely done by Jay White. That's how you get it done, kid. Jay White wants to do some kind of a running maneuver into the corner there. Nice uppercut. Nice. Beautiful Anderson form. Out. Taking a page here out of uh, Kojima's playbook, rolling Anderson out of the corner and going for the top rope move. Certainly. And now look at him ascent here. Points <laughs> the guns. Beautiful. Which for the pin, one, two. Oh, but no, Cody Hall breaks it up. I'm sure Anderson would have kicked out even if he hadn't, but Cody Hall, nice insurance policy here. Yeah, An Carl Anderson is one tough son of a gun, let me tell you. But, I mean, absolutely. Hall whips Jay White into the ropes. Big lariat into the corner. And now Anderson with the big boot. Cody I'm Hall, the spinning lariat, and Jay White is done. Absolutely. Now Anderson with a senton on top of it. Goes for the cover. One, two, and there's Elgin to break it up. Elgin breaking it up there. And now look at Cody Hall, though. Almost went over the top rope, but he landed on his feet. But what a boot from Cody Hall. That boot jacked his face. And now Carl Anderson here alone with Jay White. He wants a TKO. You know it. Oh, and Got he it. gets For the pin, Elgin, or Anderson. This might be it. Hooks the leg. One, One two. two. Oh, but Jay White kicks out of it. Wow. It seems like that TKO never actually gets the job done. Oh, but now he's calling for the actual gun stun. He Will Jay White have it scouted here? Wants to put it away. He goes for it. Jay White, roll up. One, two. two. Anderson kicks oh, up. and Anderson kicked Here. out anyway. Gun stun. There it is. It's over. There, there, wow. Explosive gun stun. Two. Cover. Two. No one. Three count. There was a little life in Jay White there. He kicked his leg a little bit, but he didn't have enough in him to kick out all the way. No, certainly not. Oh, my goodness. That was a fun match, though. I love Carl Anderson matches, man. I don't think I've seen a bad one yet. Carl Anderson is on top of his game. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Shibata might have one of the highest ceilings as far as the ability to put on five-star matches with anyone, as does Ishii. But I think if we're talking floor, meaning like the highest possible worst match, I think Carl Anderson's on that list. Absolutely. And look at that, just gesturing to Elgin. That's going to be you next tomorrow. couple of Gaijin going at it in a New Japan ring. Absolutely. Gaijin battling for supremacy here. I mean, say what you about two. Gaijin. Carl Anderson is about as much of a New Japan regular as you can be. Oh, absolutely. And you could see Jay White there. I mean, he tried. It was one hell of a game effort. Had the gun stun uh, scouted the first time. Yeah. Tried to get the quick pin. Yeah, he worked really hard. Carl Anderson, though, he's been around the block. You know, he knows how to get things done. And I still wouldn't count him out of this tournament because here's the thing. Like you said, Ashton, all it takes is one loss for Okada to rejoin everybody. I mean, I mean, this block, this whole tournament, really, both blocks have been absolutely insane. So crazy times at G1 Climax, that's for sure. Carl Anderson holding up the – I forget what kind of wolf it is, but it's some kind of wolf. I remember – they actually had, there was that, um, the Click documentary series that they're doing on the WWE Network, and Kevin Nash talks about how they were at a bar and they learned that it was just some kind of wolf. I don't remember what, what kind of wolf it is that they were doing for the Too Sweet sign. Right. I'm trying to find it now. <laughs> I'm Googling while we're watching this. Absolutely. 
as we're getting ready for our next match of a huge tag team contest. And uh, I'll tell you what, folks, these tag team matches are always so telling about what you could expect, you know, from the G1 Climax. Turkish Wolf, Turkish Wolf, that's what it is. Turkish Wolf. I've never heard of the Turkish Wolf. I mean, wolves are my favorite animal, so I'll have to look into that later. And the Turkish Wolf is is actually uh, like a gang symbol. Right. And Nash and the guys just kind of picked up on it, and now it's become kind of a, a mainstream wrestling thing. Nice. And oh, oh my man, God. is she... Who is Here Ishii? comes Ishii. Ishii is He's... going to be teaming up with Nakamura and Yoshihashi to take on Goto, Hanma, and Captain New Japan. Uh, the uh, implications in this match, we've got Ishii taking on Goto tomorrow for in the main event, actually. And Hanma and Nakamura is going to be the semi-main event tomorrow. So, oh, I wonder if... Really crazy good matches coming out of this match for tomorrow. Absolutely. I wonder if Ishii can, uh, can get his win back you know, after losing to Okada because Goto... I mean, that's no laughing matter. I thought it was going to be Ishii Hanma, and then I was going to be assured that Ishii would get his win back. Maybe Ishii's going to start to be on a downward spiral in this tournament, but then again, like I always say, I'm just really glad I don't have to say that to his face. So, there you go. And Ishii, you got to imagine, like, he gave Okada everything he could handle. Okada was just better on that night. And Ishii, it really says something that his only two losses have been to his own stablemates. You know, I mean, that really does say that the only way you can beat me is if you intimately know me, and that's pretty terrifying stuff. Yeah. That is yeah. crazy to think about. Man, now that you pointed out, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, right, though? It's just, it's absolute insanity. So and I don't think I there are any other representatives of Chaos in G1, are there? Not, yes, not that I know of, no. So, by that logic, Ishii should be in a pretty good place. He has got at this rate because he is uh, he is four and two. Three it's more funny matches. because with as overpowered as the chaos stable seems to be, I wouldn't be surprised if like Ibushi and Tanahashi were also both in it. <laughs> right, <laughs> they're not. exactly. You know, they're not, but it feels like they should be with just how many how much star power that stable has. I'll tell you what, Ashton. All the respect in the world for Shinsuke Nakamura in his last tournament bout. You know, yesterday he uh, really overcame the detriment, the handicap of that elbow against Yujiro Takahashi. Takahashi exploited it for all it was worth, and Shinsuke Nakamura powered through. I mean, that's why this man has the credentials that he has. I mean, again, I've run down the rap sheet: four-time Intercontinental Champion, 2011 G1 Climax winner. So he's been there before three-time world champion, a man that stacked wasn't going to lose because of one elbow injury. Nakamura really showed the world yesterday, in my estimation, just how good he is. And now we've got the other team coming out. It looks like we are opening things up with Tomaki Hanma, and this guy is just the definition of entertainment. Absolutely. And, I mean, Ashton, i got to ask you something, brother, because, you know, I, I always like to poke your brain a little bit, look at these athletes. If you're Hanma and you haven't put a point on the board, do you ever just sit in your locker room and reevaluate your position, kind of maybe pull a Naito and think, is what I'm doing good enough? Because I'm, I'm surprised that Hanma can still put a brave face on things and stuff. I commend him for it. I commend him for it, absolutely. I just have to question, though, maybe it's time for Hanma to reevaluate, you know, where he is and what he's doing. I mean, what do you think? I don't think Hanma cares about... Uh about putting up the most pristine win-loss record. I think as long as the fans continue to cheer him as much as they have, he's going to keep doing what he's doing. You know what? Normally, it's so weird because normally in wrestling logic, it's it's the wrestler that gravitates towards the championship. And I feel like Hanma will do that, but just in a completely different way. It won't be about in-ring dominance. It will just be about the fact that these fans are ready to see Hanma represent them and New Japan you know, as a champion. Whether it's never open weight, whether you know Hanma finds a partner and he goes after that gold, or maybe just maybe that world championship, and of course we can't forget about this championship, the entrance of this man, Hiroki Goto, the Intercontinental Champion. And I'll tell you what, Ashton Goto, is really he's impressive. Player. There's Absolutely. no other way to put it. He is an impressive, an impressive performer for sure. Absolutely, he beat Kojima uh, yesterday, but then on. Uh, on he did lose 10. to Nakamura. Yeah, that was on day 10. But that was only his second loss. Absolutely. You know, Goto, 
very, very impressive human being, you know, to your point. I believe he's already beaten Hanma, if I'm not mistaken, or have they not faced off yet? I'm not sure. I, th- I know that his, his, his two losses have been Nakamura and Carl Anderson. I believe that Goto and Hanma have faced off already, uh, but I, I can't be entirely sure about that. But, you know, Goto's just been, as you said, so impressive. That's why he's the Intercontinental Champion. Very prestigious championship in New Japan. Guys like Nakamura, of course, helping put it on the map. In fact, a lot of people, I think, would argue that Nakamura did definitively put it on the map, you know, with his efforts. Uh, and Goto's just been kind of carrying on that torch. Yeah, I mean, he's been... Yeah, Goto has been living up to the standard that Nakamura set for the Intercontinental Championship, I think. I would completely agree with that assessment. Oh, and it looks like Hanma, Hanma wants a piece of Ishii. Or no, Nakamura. He wants a piece of, not a piece of Nakamura. And now, say what you will, Nakamura's still got his elbow taped up, but it definitely seems like his, it's bothering him less today than it has been since the tournament, well, since he got it, really. Well, here's the story here, Ashton, in my estimation. You know Hanma isn't a malicious competitor. You know he's not one to exploit handicaps for his own benefit. But the thing is, that Kakeshi headbutt, when he hits you know, the static version off the ropes, it does cause pain to the arm. And if he does it to the bad arm, you know, the bad elbow of Nakamura, that hard head of Hanma's, I mean, that could really put Nakamura in a bad what way. What an upset that would be. Oh my God, dude! Are you kidding? You and I would be raving about it. I know how I you mean, and I have acted. I mean, we called it an upset when Carl Anderson beat Nakamura, but let's be honest with ourselves: Carl Anderson has proven himself to be a very legitimate competitor. Hanma's zero and six. Exactly. I mean, and given the precedent that you and I have established, you know, about our reactions to upsets here in the G1 climax, if that oh, you go for Hanma, one already, and he misses here. Yep. And now Nakamura going to stand a beautiful snapmare takedown by Nakamura. And now look at that knee there, using that limb advantage to its full potential. But, <laughs> Mocking Hanma, acting like he was going to go for a Kokeshi headbutt, but instead just dropping the knee on Hanma's neck and, and head area. I'll tell you what, they, they don't make wrestlers like Nakamura. This man is a rarity in my view, just oozes charisma off the charts. As now Captain New Japan's going to come in. He's going to double-team Nakamura with Hanma. Let's see if they can get it done here. Double shoulder block there. And Captain now Cap the New Japan. Japan. Just kind of strutting a little bit now, pointing into the air, and he wants some kind of an across-the-ring kind of move here. Oh, oh but Nakamura had a check, though. Up. Beautiful. Nakamura gets New, Captain New Japan up at the top. I look at Ishii. Up. I love that. What's I he love... Doing? Oh, he's he going after Goto. Nice. And he's going after Goto. Like, he had the front face lock on Captain New Japan, so he couldn't escape. And it allowed Nakamura to drive those knees into Captain New Japan. Ah, see, now you're being more observant than I am because I didn't see him with the front face lock. That just amazing teamwork from Chaos, and I wouldn't expect anything else. And, and now, now again, another example with Nakamura holding Captain New Japan in place. Well, there we go. Yoshihashi hits the drop kick. These guys are so good, dude. It's not even fair. It's not even just fair. Just imagine, though, if Yoshihashi was replaced by Okada. That would be an undefeatable team. Yeah, you, you and I could just call it. You and I could honestly just call it. There was no way that those guys would lose that match. Just like, no I feel way. like if we, we could come up with any trio with using the entire rest of the New Japan roster, like I would probably say maybe like AJ Styles, Tanahashi, and Goto might give them a run for their money, but even then it would be a struggle. Yeah, it's a pretty futile situation, people. Yeah, it is. If you realize that you're facing chaos, two things. One, don't call me because I ain't helping you. And two, <laughs> Tuck your tail between your legs. Yeah. And- Hope that you don't pee too much. Exactly. When you feel the warmth running down your leg, that's a perfectly normal symptom. It's embarrassing, but it's a normal symptom nonetheless. It's to be expected. And you want to talk about normal symptoms, Captain New Japan, that fall, uh, that courage, I was going to say falls, I should really say liquid courage, because if you really think that your forearms are going to phase Ishii, you got to be on something. And what a suplex there by Ishii. Goes right into the cover here. Only look at that. Out, though. That looked more like Ishii broke up the pin because he noticed something rather than kind of the New Japan kicking out. Did you notice that? It seemed like he yeah. kind of gave a look. Yeah, Ishii's got surprisingly good ring awareness, too. That's what makes him so dangerous, Ashton. I think like, what makes him so dangerous is that he's this insane, like, tough, just brick wall of a human being, but he's not some dumb, mindless monster. He thinks. Have you ever played a video game where you got to a certain boss and it seemed like your go-to attacks were doing very minimal damage on their health bar? Yeah. That's Ishii. 
Yeah. That's Ishii to me. Like, see, that shoulder block, that was nice by Captain New Japan. It was, and it creates space, and he could get the tag. But Ishii's going to get up soon here, and we'll have to see if Goto can capitalize, and he does with the shoulder block. So, see, they're wearing down Ishii's health bar, but how long is that going to last? And that's the thing, too. Not only do your attacks do very little damage to Ishii, but he seems to have some kind of a recovery move as well. Exactly. And now Goto, the spinning heel kick in the corner. Those bosses in video games are the worst. Uh, yeah, it's like, oh, me. man, we're whittling down his health bar. We're going to finally win. This boss used Recover. <laughs> oh, my God. I hated that shit with Pokemon Yellow. And Goto there with that elbow. Ishii with the follow-through, though. And, oh, almost got the Lariat. Saito suplex there by Goto, though. Nice. Hooks the leg. Two. Two count, though, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. You better kick out Ishii. We're talking you up so much. I, dude, dude, even if he got pinned, I'd be like, you know what? Accidents happen, Ishii. It yeah. wasn't you. It was the left. <laughs> yeah. It was the left, man. What, hey, what are you doing? Wait, my spy doesn't go that way. And then, it, yeah, just over. Just completely over. And oh, oh wow. This is where the tide starts to turn. You don't get into a striking con contest competition with Tomohiro Ishii. He will destroy you. And he just did. That lariat took Goto off his feet and on his ass. And look at his eyes. He doesn't even know where he is right now. And now Ishii, good God, is he already going to go for that brain buster? I've said like, it before and I'll say it again. You might be able to out-wrestle Tomohiro Ishii, but nobody on this planet can out-fight him. Exactly. Oh, Fireman's carry there from Goto and now drives the back of the head into the knee there. That's smart, though. He's pulling out wrestling moves. I mean, that's not to say that Tomohiro Ishii isn't a good wrestler, because he is. But the one thing that you can't do against him is fight him. The most impressive to me that Ishii... Oh, and back comes Nakamura and Hanma, oh, as you oh, were, we John. Uh, but I was going to say, the most impressive Ishii look to me was his match with Nakamura. I still can't get over that Ishii. Tomohiro Ishii, the Stone Pitbull, pulled out a drop kick. And speaking of maneuvers there, that was a beautiful enziguri there by uh, Nakamura to Hanma. Now the foot shiver's upcoming. Oh, and he's getting into it now. He's getting into that rhythm. He's getting into a groove, man. You can tell he's starting to dance a little bit and everything. Oh, oh and he went for the knee, knee, but Hanma... Got out of the way. Now Hanma, forearm in the corner. Oh, Bulldog. Bulldog, he wants the Kakeshi. You can tell. He's going for it. Can he get it? Oh, and he and missed he it. Not. Oh, man. And now oh, Nakamura man. picks him up. Now Nakamura there. Oh, oh Torpedo! Torpedo Kakeshi! Torpedo Kakeshi, and he's going to go for a regular one. Oh. And, and he, he nails it. it, but he didn't oh. hit it on the bad arm, John. Well, maybe tomorrow. I don't know. Two, and Nakamura just kicked out. Wow. Even if only barely. I'll tell you, I, I can't even believe you get a torpedo Kakeshi, you do it with the more static, you know, standard Kakeshi, and it only gets a two, but that's just the toughness, the resiliency of Shinsuke Nakamura. And now Nakamura... Oh, the flip-around yeah. kick to the back of the head. Yeah, that flip-around rebound kick. Didn't get it once, tried it twice, got it. And now here comes Hashi, who has just been so impressive in these tag matches. We, I mean, I know we call him Hashi, but we also call Takahashi and Tanahashi Hashi. So, like... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, the deadlift vertical from Hanmo. How does he do it? I don't know. And I think he just point or no, he pointed at Captain New Japan. I thought it was pointing. At Where is Goto? Goto's not even on the apron. Where'd he go? I don't know. Goto may be recovering. And now Captain New Japan corner and house here. There's Goto. Okay, Goto there. And oh, look at that. They're going to triple team. Oh, Yoshi what a lariat. And now rolls wow. Yoshihashi out. Oh, Hanma's going to go for another Kakeshi. He hit it. Is he going to go to the top rope? Are we going to get a top rope? No, it looks like Captain New Japan's going up. Maybe oh, an Goto. elbow drop, it looks like. Goto and Hanma being encouraged. Oh, a headbutt. Wow. Cover here. Oh, but Nakamura and Ishii are there to break it up. Wow, you have to imagine, though, if Goto and Hanma played better defense, that would have been it. I guess that would ha that's just kind of what happens when you're not used to teaming up with each other. Kevin Nutriman firing himself up. He can sense that they may be on the verge of a big victory because you're talking about putting three guys together against a well-oiled machine in chaos. One it's of these teams has chemistry. The other doesn't. That might come into play here. Oh, and look at Nakamura. How smart is Nakamura? Oh, my God. Ishii, good God. And there's Oh, Yoshi that was adorable. Yoshihashi took Ishii's setup move. Yeah, yeah. Captain New Japan kicks out of it because it's, yeah. not, it's not Ishii, so... <laughs> Dude, I don't even know how Captain New Japan... Let's talk about the real miracle here, that his head is still on his shoulders. That, that Larry, Larry, yeah. Good God. And now oh. Look at that. oh, man, but Yoshiashi ignores it. No, what an uppercut there by Captain New Japan. Now Captain New Japan off the ropes. 
What a oh, lariat that's, that's from Yoshihashi. Like the lariat by Yoshihashi there. Scoop slam here, maybe? Yeah, scoop slam. He wants the senton. Yeah, this might be academic here. He gets that senton. I find it so odd that Yoshihashi's gotten so many pinfalls in these tag team matches with heavyweights. I know. Oh, and, and he hits are... it. And I think he's going to get another one here. Although it looked like Hanma was in the corner. No, that's it. That's it. Chaos reigns. Good match. Good match. I enjoyed that. I didn't enjoy that as much as the Carl Anderson Cody Hall match, but this was still fun. Absolutely. Yoshihashi picks up the win for his team. What an impressive individual he is. I mean, you want to talk about impressive. I still can't get over that Ishii Larry, and that could be Goto tomorrow, Ash. Yeah. Be- that I mean, you you want to talk about a setup for the brain buster. Because here's the thing. I know people may say in the comments, oh, come on, guys. Ishii's lost twice. Clearly, he's beatable. He's lost his superhuman status in your eyes. Not necessarily, because to my point again, he lost to his stablemates, the people that know him better than anyone. When exactly. he's faced anybody People that know of- his strengths and weaknesses and know how to manipulate them. Exactly. And Goto my- is not on that list. He is not on that You know list. what, John? The way that you're talking about it, I could see Ishii going 7-2. and two. I could see it too, man. I really could. And, and that's, but the I'm thing actually, is, I could also see Okada going seven and two, which would mean that he would win the block. Yeah. Because, uh, well, again, though, I could also see Nakamura going seven and two. So then it would really just come down to who wins between Nakamura and Okada. And in order for Nakamura to go seven and two, he would need to beat Okada, which means that if those three guys all finish at seven and two, Nakamura would win the block. Yeah, and that's just it. I mean, for Ishii. That's got to be a heartbreaker because I believe that man on any given night could be world champion. Yeah. And he just didn't win the matches that I think were really going to matter. And chaos is still going to continue to reign here. Well, and that's the thing, too, is that Nakamura lost a match by forfeit. So he's only really lost one match in this tournament. Absolutely. And now it's going to be Bullet Club versus Chaos. Some factional warfare here. Yujiro Takahashi and Tamatanga, who's been so impressive. Yeah, tomatonga has gotten a lot of pinfall wins, too. I could see him getting another one over Ghetto here. I mean, I think I've said that before when these guys have been in the ring together. Yeah. But, you know. Since and it probably since, happened. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't think it did, though. But now that it's two on two, I could really see it happening. You know, your standard by the numbers tag team matchup. And here comes the Bullet Club. And I'll tell you, Tomatonga, he may be a weird egg, folks, but he gets the job done. Something about he just gets that face paint on and he goes to a different place. A place where I am so glad I don't have to follow. <laughs> and Takahashi. How is Takahashi feeling, Ashton, knowing that he has to face Okada tomorrow? Do you get like, are you excited about the prospect of being the world champion? Or are you a bit nervous? Like, this guy's going to take my head off with You know what, maker? John? If, if it was me personally in Takahashi's position, I'd be horrified. But look at him. Look how confident he is. He doesn't think he's going to lose tomorrow. Like, you know what's so funny about Takahashi Ashen, and, and step in if you think that I'm I'm wrong, but I just can't help but feel like people look at Takahashi and they feel like they're going to get one thing. And I'm telling you, ever since that Nagata matchup where he worked those ribs, I'm like, guys, don't overlook Yujiro Takahashi. I get it. He comes out with the girls. He's got the charisma. You may think that maybe he's compensating because maybe he's not that kind of ring strategist. There is something very dangerous about Yujiro Takahashi. And if I'm Okada, I agree with you. I am fearful if I'm Takahashi because Okada is the best in the game today. That's what being the IWGP heavyweight champion symbolizes. Well, but again, was... that comes back to if we were Takahashi, we would have some fear. But Exactly. Takahashi himself, man, he, he probably doesn't even think about his U1 matches. He probably doesn't watch any kind of tape. He's probably just the kind of guy who goes into it with his natural ability. And if he wins, he wins. If not, he's still going home to a hottie. Absolutely. I mean, can you imagine if in one night, uh, I mean, tomorrow is going to be very telling if we get either Tomoaki Hanma beating Shinsuke Nakamura or uh, Yujiro Takahashi beating Okada. I mean, that that's just insane to think about. Yeah, I mean, it's insane to think about because it's almost definitely not going to happen. <laughs> but if even one of those matches happen, that just... <laughs> I'm going to have to call somebody in here to clean yeah. up the brain matter off the walls, and here is Okada. I think the and, biggest upset that we're in store for tomorrow is Ishii beating Goto. Yeah, and you know what? That's not even that much of an upset, though, so that's very did telling. Did Okada undye his hair? I think he did. I kind of dig it, though, I'll be honest. Well, uh, but it's not bleached blonde anymore. It's not. It's like, 
I want to say normal these color. Yeah, yeah. Crazy to think about. And there it's like that's like part of his iconic look, though, was that bleached blonde hair. That's very true. I wonder why he decided to change it. I don't know. Maybe because he wanted Hanma to have that. Yeah, maybe. He's like, look, man, I'm the champion. I don't need the bleach blonde hair look. You can have it. Well, see, that's just the charity and the generosity of the world champion. So there you go. He looks like a different person now. It's a, it's a lot like when Dolph Ziggler tried to go with the brown hair. You know, the short Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, un- unlike Dolph, though, hopefully it doesn't really affect Okada's performance because Dolph really didn't rack up a lot of wins with that look. Yeah, but, it uh, lasted less than a month, though, so... Exactly, because it really wasn't doing him any favors. But Okada, man, I'll tell you, um, we talked about it so much yesterday, Ashton, as the show was drawing to a close. If you're Okada, I, I know I was joking earlier, oh, everybody's answers and that. Let me talk to you seriously for a second. Because if you're Okada at 5-1... and one, you have a great prize awaiting you if you keep up this level of performance. You control your opponent for the world championship, your next big challenger. I mean, yeah, I mean, if he wanted to, he could pick Ghetto and just ask him to lie down for him. Exactly. Now, you put yourself in Takahashi's shoes. I'm going to ask you to put yourself in Okada's shoes for just a second. If you go the distance, if you win the 2015 G1 Climax... Do you abuse this power to give yourself pretty much a night off at Wrestle Kingdom 10? Or do you really want to show the world that you are the man in pro wrestling right now? And do you go for the biggest dog in the yard that you could fight? For yeah, I mean, if, if I'm Okada and I win this whole tournament, I'm picking Tanahashi. I'm going after the biggest dog in the yard who took my moment away from me the year before. And I'm going to take his moment away from him this year. Oh, wow. And look at that. And Takahashi just giving Okada this look like, okay. And the, Oh, nice elbow strike there to the knee of Takahashi. Okada's I almost got point. confused there because now Takahashi's got the bright blonde hair and Okada's got normal colored hair. Now Takahashi just grabbing Okada by that hair and then the blatant eye rake. And that's what you can expect from Takahashi. And the ref's tomorrow. just like, dude, don't do that. Seriously. <laughs> exactly. Like, come on, Takahashi. Come on. And there's the I know you know there. better, but me talking to you about it is... Oh, that's a no-no. And now... Oh, oh wow. Okada with Just the a boot. big boot. Snap, Snap there. Take over. Off the ropes. Off the ropes. Drop kick. Wow. Wow. Okada is in the zone right now. Well, when you're 5-1, and one, wouldn't you be? You realize you have to win three more matches. Can you imagine if Okada goes 8-1? and one? Can you just imagine that for a second? Because, I mean, we're already picking him to beat well, Takahashi. I mean, it wouldn't be unprecedented. Last year, a bunch of guys went 9-1. and one. That's true. Yeah, and you did tell me that. But I think 8-1, and one, I don't know. It would be a real... I don't know if anybody could even touch that, because everybody else seems to have two losses. So I think Okada would pretty much monopolize the block at that point. And actually, now that I think about it, I feel like maybe last year, the, the, the group of guys at the top weren't 9-1, and one, they were 8-2. and two. Right. I mean, we'll we'll see what happens, but I'm really yeah. That's getting... what it was. There were three guys last year that were at eight and two. Nakamura, Okada, and Styles were all eight and two last year. Oh, I'll look at Ghetto just being like, "Hey, let's have a good management." I almost want to shake the hand and Tamatanga <laughs> whacking the finger. <laughs> that was the funniest thing I've seen in a while. Tamatanga is like a weird combination <laughs> of like Randy Orton, Roman Reigns, and the Boogeyman. I know, like. I don't know when he's got like the face paint with with, with the beard and everything. Like I don't know. I, I just picture him like giving that sage advice. Oh my god! I was hand. taking advantage of. <laughs> wow. Well, Tomatonga come... finally decides to be a little hospitable for a change, and you <laughs> teach him not to. That's not gonna help Tomatonga break his walls down, Ghetto. Oh, Jesus. My god, Tomatonga is the way that he moves around the ring blows my mind sometimes. He just looks at all these people and he's like, I'm just, I'm so above you. This face paint is so baller. You don't have face paint like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and now look at that charging, but oh, look at that. That shoulder thrust there, like on the apron, pretty much, like in the gut. edge, man. That psychological advantage. I'll tell you, you know that I, you know, more than anybody, it seems like in the course of this tournament, I've really been talking about Tama Tonga's upside. I hope we get to see him in G1 Climax 2016. I mean, look at me thinking ahead. We're not even done 2015 yet, but... Tomatonga is so good, so good. And it's so now, weird to see Tomatonga's face paint up close because, like, he's got his nose painted like a cat. I know, right? A and nice. Like, like, I'm trying to uh, just like squint a little bit and just imagine that he's wearing a scream mask, but then you see him up close, and it's like he's trying to be a little kitty cat. Oh, now Takashi trying to help Tomatonga and, and Ghetto. I'll tell you, Ghetto what. is just taking it to everyone right now. 
Maybe he should have been a boxer because those jabs from Ghetto, those strikes. Those weren't even jabs either. Those were just open-handed slaps. Exactly. And now, we've got a, a nice measured shot there in the corner. Now he's got Tama Tonga by the hair, and that's a lot of hair to work with. And now, I, I didn't know if he was going to try and trap the arm, but it was an Irish whip reversed by Tama Tonga. He's going to charge, but what a kick there by Ghetto in the gut. Oh, oh but man. look at that. Takahashi is pulling Ghetto out up against the guardrail. And now... You gotta wonder, is the plan right now to try and capitalize and get a win right here, right now? Because Tamatanga is on the outside punching the crap out of Okada. And again, Takahashi drives Ghetto's back into the guardrail. What do you think, John? Do you think that they're gonna take advantage of this and try and get a win right now, or is this just mind games? I think this is just mind games. You know, I think Bullet Club, to their detriment, I might add, that they're like a cat that likes to play with their food. You know, they like to show we are the most dominant. Uh, faction here. Again, I called it factional warfare at the start. You know, Bullet Club versus Chaos. And Bullet Club is in firm control here. They've got Ghetto isolated. They've got Okada in discomfort. I mean, outright pain, really. Let's not try and sugarcoat it. And now they're really, I think, going to exploit this advantage. Tama Tonga now, he's going to stalk and skulk around Ghetto. And I think they're really going to pick him apart here. And now, oh, oh what a headbutt. And you know headbutts are always way more effective when they come from Pacific Islanders, which Tamatonga is. Absolutely, and I was going to hook the leg here. On the and count, though, Ghetto gets his shoulder up. Goes for it again. Again. And now just oh. mounting him with punches. Absolutely. I like that, though. I like the sense of urgency from Tamatonga, not letting Ghetto get an inch. All right, he kicked out of one pin attempt. Let me go for another. Kick out of another. Then I'm just going to go into the punches. Make Ghetto exert that energy and really wear him down. Now here it comes back in Yujiro Takahashi. And now Takashi Oh, you. and just kicks him in the gut. And another oh, and again, another kick to the gut. And now an elbow drop. Man, Takahashi being scientific right now. Absolutely. Well, that's what I'm saying. There Maybe not so much scientific. Just, definitely, like, just slow, methodical, taking piece by piece, taking Ghetto apart. Almost as if to say, I am going to take my time, and you're not going to be able to do anything about it. Absolutely. I mean, I'm telling you, there's something very dangerous about you, Joe Targa. I'm looking at him just putting the boot to the back of Ghetto's head. And, and again, almost like he's just like treating him like trash. You've got nothing on me. And now Ghetto's going to oh. have to fight from the ground up. What a strike there. Two strikes. Three he went strikes. for a third, but no Takahashi with the eye rake. Wow, and now Ghetto caught up in the ropes there. And now Takahashi could it be the boot. He's charging up. Oh. And he got the boot. Did Ghetto just spit out his mouthpiece? He may have. It looked like he spit out the. It looked like there was a clear mouthpiece that fell out of his mouth. I mean, that was a lot of impact on that boot. And now, snapmare. Yeah, snapmare takedown. Like drop Off the ropes. No, Ghetto gets up. Ghetto get sat up. up here. He has an opportunity right now. He needs to get a tag. Can he get it though? That's the question. He's crawling. He the... He's crawling. Oh, but Tonga so smart. Takes Okada down off the apron. Absolutely. And now look at that bullet club once again alone with Ghetto. Just oh, absolutely this might be, this might be bad. Yeah, that was bad. Oh, and there's the miscue. You had to expect it from the bullet club. Oh, and Okada's back up on the apron. Ghetto has another opening. This is his opportunity. Can he get there? Can he get there? He's crawling. He's crawling. Look at Tamatanga, though, with his boot. Oh, but it didn't matter. Okada is in. And now Okada. punch to Tamatanga. Back elbow to Takahashi. Big boot to Tamatanga. Ducks the lariat attempt and a DDT to Takahashi. Beautiful kip up. What an athlete Okada is. Okada is a monster in there. That's why he's the world champion. That He doesn't get paid by the hour, Ashton. And now, and now he's going to shoot Takahashi into a beautiful flapjack. Nice. Goes to the cover. Man. One, two, and Takahashi kicks out with ease. Absolutely. That's not to say he's not struggling, but that kick out is pretty flawless. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Okada uh, across the world. Oh, goes for the back elbow, but misses. Takahashi. Oh, he went for a big boot. Okada caught the boot. Okada with the waist lock. Oh, can he get it here? Oh, but look at Takahashi. They're biting. Biting the hand of Okada. Oh, oh, I think he oh and the uppercut sunk. from Okada. Nice by Okada. There. Oh, and the big the boot here. from Takahashi now. Oh, Ta Takahashi Ta wants a... Oh, the fisherman buster. There it is. And he got it. He got it. Okada, though, favoring the back of that head. And you Tama know what? Tonga that... on his way into the ring now. Oh, this oh, could be man. bad. Tamatanga and Okada now. 
That face paint's starting to wear off from Dumb and Tonga, but now charges and wow! Almost like a stinger a... splash there. Absolutely, and I'll look at... Oh, my God. Fireman's Tumba carry! Tonga. Flapjack. Nice. And now look at that. Cover. And Okada kicks out. Okada stays in it. Okada Tumba Tumba. is a tough guy. But let's be honest, all it was was a flapjack. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, yeah, absolutely. But I got to tell you, though. Oh, drop kick. That was amazing. Okada, one of the best drop kicks in the business right now. The, uh, you know what's so beautiful about Okada's drop kick? Isn't necessarily just that he can jump high. I mean, that helps. But it's also just the precision. Because every single time, both of his feet connect with the other person's face. A absolutely. I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah, it really is the combination of elevation and precision. And now Tom Back Tonga's elbow from Okada there. here in the corner. Ghetto is the legal man now. Ghetto shoots Tom Tonga into Okada. Neckbreaker. Neck Super kick. Go for the what pin. Kick. No, cover. One, two. Oh, but it looks like that. Takahashi broke up the pin before the three count. Takahashi, they're able to keep his team alive. And now look at this, though. Look at who's isolated. It's Ghetto, Ghetto and Tamatanga. Tamatanga, yep. Ghetto, you might want to put this away now. A drop kick to the knee. That Lobo drop kick there. And oh, he wants a camel clutch, but Tonga, uh, Tamatanga reversed. Tamatanga yeah. inverted. Almost like a... Oh! Wow! That? that could do it there. That could Ghetto do it out. there. And Ghetto does, yes, he gets out of it. That was an odd... That was a really cool-looking variation of a neckbreaker. Or a, not even a neckbreaker, a cutter, it looked like. Absolutely. I, I was very impressed by Tamatanga was, there. Now. Almost like an inverted crossroads. Did you notice that? Yeah, absolutely. I think he was thinking head shrinker. Ghetto with the eye rake there, but oh, Tamatanga, beautiful drop kick. Tamatanga's drop kick isn't quite as nice as Okada's, but it's still definitely one of the better ones I've seen in New Japan. And wow, Takahashi just took Ghetto's head off and now takes Okada out. Takahashi going to play defense here. He's going to go out and prevent Okada from breaking up the pin. I think Tamatanga wants a head shrinker. I think he does as well. He I has it locked in. Uh, well, underhook of one, underhook two, and he hit it. That's going to be it. Oh, that, that's Goes that's the pin. it. One, two, and that's it. Match over. Tamatonga gets another pinfall victory. Wow. They are really building Tamatonga up, and I am not complaining about it because he is a talented human being. Absolutely. Tamatonga gets the winning pin. And now oh, look Takahashi at this and Okada now. still going at it on the outside. Come on now. Save Takahashi. It for <laughs> <laughs> Takahashi taking full advantage of the fact that Okada had his guard down. The bell is ringing like crazy right now. I mean, normally I get the stare downs. I get it. I get that there's a lot of tension in this tournament. Takahashi took it one step further. He tried hurting Okada right in the guard round, then just steps on him. No class, no respect. Then again, that just seems to be the M.O. of the Bullet Club as they reign supreme here. I called it factional warfare at the start of the match, and right now, it is Bullet Club's reign. If there's one thing Bullet Club is not interested in, it's respect. Absolutely. Unless it's respect towards them, in which case they're very interested in it. <laughs> Absolutely. And you got to wonder, though, if you're Yujiro Takahashi, I mean, did you just make a grave mistake? Because Okada's not one to forget. And I'll tell you, he gets that Rainmaker. Takahashi may have to bid farewell to his head on his shoulders, because it'll come clean off, I'll tell you. And Takahashi's so proud of himself. Hey, he has reason to be proud of himself, not only because he, he attempted at least to injure Okada, but because his team won. You, you do make a great point there. I could understand. That would have probably gotten on my nerves if Takahashi would have done that showboating despite a loss, just to be like, ha ha, I hurt you, Okada. But no, his team won, so he has all the reason in the world to be proud. I guess you have a point there. Is that a sign of things to come, though, tomorrow when they square off one-on-one? -on -one? It's Yujiro Takahashi versus Okada, the IWGP Heavyweight Champion. Man, if, uh, if Takahashi could pull it off, I would really call that the new upset of this tournament thus far. Yeah, well, that would be the upset of the century. Good board. Absolutely. Nobody sees that coming. I definitely don't think it's going to happen, so... The, the, the less you think something's going to happen, the more of an upset it becomes if it does, right? Absolutely. That being said, guys, that's going to be the end of the first half of this recording. We will be back with part two. It's probably going to be a little tiny bit later than usual today, but probably no later than six. And we will be back by then. Hopefully you enjoyed this.